Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Jade Washall, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're going to talk about your life right in front of you. Talk about you right in front of you. The phone number is 888-825-5225. You jump in and we'll talk. Michael is going to start this hour. He's in Dallas. Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm good, Dave. How are you guys doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? Um, nothing. So I'm in an interesting predicament. Um, I've incurred about... 60k worth of debt um, trying to survive a lawsuit Um, I started a company with four gentlemen down in Austin Uh, things were going well Uh, this started right at the beginning of COVID and we progressed for about three years towards the end there were some let's say vision differences and me and my partner ended up selling the uh, company to a company out of Houston, and two of the other gentlemen, our CTO and our CRO, basically stole all of our intellectual property. And the problem lies, I I have about um, roughly about a a $250,000 stake um, that I'm I'm kind of chasing, trying to figure out what I should do and whether or not I should should give up and call it quits. Um, But things have come basically... sucked me dry and um, I'm getting kind of desperate so yeah I was hoping hoping to get some guidance hmm. well I don't borrow money and um, I hate your position because this kind of stuff I'm a redneck it makes me mad I want to fight to the death yeah um, yeah I'm, and I'm yet you don't and let you simply money. don't have a war chest yeah and yeah, you, you so, could go you could go another sixty thousand dollars in four years in debt and still never yeah. see any of this. Yeah. Because about the only of. thing we're all sure about the court system is that it sucks. Yeah. I mean, if, even if you're right, it mm-hmm. sucks. It takes forever and a lot of money to prove you're right. And so no one ends up winning, as you figured out, but the lawyers. Yeah. Even when you win, and, you lose. And and the other opposing party, uh, one of the gentlemen, his wife is a lawyer. She's actually a partner at a firm, so they've been very successful at just burying us in every which way they can. Yeah, they're just kicking the can yeah. down the road, dragging it out, and make it, trying to starve you out. It's yeah. not a bad strategy on their part, actually, but yeah. Yeah, <sighs> uh, that's why we hired him. Yeah. I mean, you said your stake in this is $250,000. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that. That, so that, that's essentially what my, my payout would be. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, but because they have stolen the intellectual property and done a split off company, mm-hmm. uh, the company who bought us pretty much put a pause on it until, mm. you know, everything is resolved because th- that's, that's what they paid for. Mm-hmm. Um, and through a, just a, a number of loopholes I won't bore you with, they've basically been able to pull all of the, uh, I guess, most relevant information and the most uh, critical things that we would need. And, you know, they're, they're really just kind of holding it at this point just to hurt so, us or harm us. And so the intel, the they're not competing with you with the IP yet, but they've, but well, they've they, undone your, your sale by holding the IP. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. They, they have, they have the, um, inclined, like they're starting a company that's mm-hmm. supposed to do something similar. The company um, that the you sold is, to, do they have deep pockets? They do, yes. I'd cut a deal with them. Go to them. Let, them go to them and over. let them fight it, and tell them you'll take, you'll deduct the um, the uh, legal fees from their the stake that they owe you. Yeah, they owe you two fifty if you win, right? If you don't well, win, just, the company that yeah. bought this has got nothing. Yeah. Because they got a competitor in the marketplace, and they don't even have access to the IP right now, you're telling me. Correct. Yeah. So they've got to win, or their sale is bad. And what they're doing is they're saying, we're not going to pay you the 250 until you give us what we bought, mm-hmm. which included the IP, right? Correct. Yeah. If I'm that company and you came to me, I'll go knock them in the nose because I got the money. 
and I did this deal to start with. So in other words, they owe you two fifty. If they spend one fifty on this uh, to get it, you're going to get a hundred. Yeah. The, the, the more the you're going to get otherwise. We we have a, a number of investors. I'm probably the smallest split of that. The total sale of the company was ten million dollars. Yeah. Well, I would um, go to some of them yeah. then and do the same thing. Yeah. And yeah, just go, guys. Sure. I'm out. I can't. I can't do it anymore. I can't. I'm not financing this on a credit card. This is stupid. I can't. I. I'm not. A, I don't have big enough war chest to stay in the fight. You know. I reach my end. So, yeah. I. I'll give you. If you'll give me credit towards it, or or I'll even discount my share. Um, and then you, you know, take my share of the legal fees out of it and pay me out if you win. Good luck. I'll be happy to sign it over to you. On that basis. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the, the issue too is I'm, I'm probably the smallest fish in this entire equation. I'm only 28. Most of these people are 40, just, you know, longer careers, a little bit more of a war chest. Like you said, Yeah. my only concern is one, if that were to be the case, I were to get some sort of payout and then they end up losing. Right. Then you won't get a payout. Yeah. Yeah. They're taking the chance then, not you. That's why you would discount your share. Okay. So if one of the other investors said, okay, we're going to continue the fight, you can't, and we'll continue it on your behalf, we're going to take your pro rata portion of the future legal fees out of your share, and we're also going to discount your share since you're not in the fight anymore. That'd be a deal for you. And it's not a bad deal for them because you're tapping out either way. Because if you tap out and do nothing and they go win – you're going to get the full thing. So it's a better deal for them if you offer to let them continue the fight on your behalf and you give them credit for that. That's a better deal for them. How many? Because okay. there's like 10 or 15 people playing in this, you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is not a, this is a complicated mess. Yeah. Wow. Golly. Some people's children. Yeah. Whew, man. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds very, very, very stressful. There's a lot of money at stake yeah, there. I, I, you just can't stay in it, Michael. You, you've got to find a sugar daddy to keep you in the deal. Yeah, well, yeah, because if he tries to do this, he'll mess around and spend all his stake on lawyer's fees. Well, and he won't even. Even then, he got at least he wins, but he gets nothing. That's what I'm saying. He I mean, won't even he get spent anything for it. If he goes to $50,000 in debt and then loses. Mm-hmm. Oh, then he's yeah, double. Completely screwed. Yeah. You know, so you just got to stop, Michael. You got to stop. But I would sell out my part to somebody, the buyer or the other investors or somebody at a discount. Yeah. Um, in today, or if they want to give you cash, that'd be awesome. Or if, uh, or better yet, I would discount it and offer to have them reduce the amount by the my share of the attorney's fees going forward, my 115th or whatever that ends up being. Like you said, you're in an untenable situation. This is why we don't believe in partnerships around here, boys and girls. The only ship that won't sail is a partnership. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget.
Hey guys, Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality is my co-host. We're heading to Chicagoland in the morning. We'll be doing a uh, smart conference there Friday night and uh, all day Saturday. All the Ramsey Personalities speaking on career, on life and money, and uh, of course on uh, anxiety and all the other things that Dr. John Deloney talks about. So we're going to be talking about every area of your life in one way or another. It's a day long or day and a half long adventure. It is a blast. It's a lot of fun. If you're in the Chicagoland area, we'll be on the Willow Creek campus utilizing their sanctuary to uh, do the event. And we'd love to have you. we got some tickets left. Check it out at RamseySolutions.com slash events. Also, uh, you should know that the first two hours on Saturday morning, we have decided we're going to live stream that free. And that'll be... Uh, a little bit from me, but mostly Jade and George's talk, uh, George <laughs> Camel's talk and Jade's talk about how you can break free from money stress and create the debt-free future you deserve. So if you want to hear a free money talk from Jade and George, just tune in by free live stream. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash live. Drop in your email. We'll send you the link on Saturday morning. You can watch that live. And... Uh, be about an hour, a little more than an hour's worth of content total there for that whole thing. So we'd love to have you guys and come in and join us. If you're not able to be in the Chicago area, if you're going to be in the Chicago area, you don't want to miss this. Mm -hmm. These smart conferences, uh, you know, when you leave a smart conference, um, you're smart. Er, there you go. That's good. Our question of the day comes from Neighborly, your hub for home services. They are your one place to find reliable HVAC, plumbing, and electrical providers near you. Brands like AirServe, Mr. Reuter, and Mr. Electric have professionals ready to help stop wasting time scrolling through pages of results just go to neighborly.com they'll help you they're good people they are and today's question comes from david in oklahoma he says my wife and i have started financial peace university way to go we are on baby step two and we have some questions currently we have four vehicle payments and i recently lost my job we're living off my wife's salary and unemployment payments we keep hearing about people selling their vehicles and buying cheap cars. How is this done when you're upside down? Very good. Uh, we are upside down on all four vehicles, and we want to know how to good downsize. Lord. We are thinking about surrendering the motorcycles, but that will end up costing us around 16 k after we sell them. Any help would be great as we are determined to get debt free. Okay, so I actually have a list that they've given me here. So they've got her truck which is $852. Good God. A month, by the way. They've got her... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was his truck. They've got her SUV for $677 a month. And then they've got two motorcycles. One's 555 The other one's 408 Now, he doesn't tell me how far upside down they are. I'm going to assume... He thinks he's 16 on the motorcycles, but yeah. he's wrong. Well, why do you think he's wrong? Well, because he thinks that, that, if he, if, that they're going to give him full price in a repo... If you do a voluntary repo and you take people the keys, they sell your crap on a repo lot. Oh, he had, you're right. He said surrendering. Don't yeah, do that. Don't do that. If they sell it on a repo lot, they sell it for below wholesale at a repo price, and they sue you for the difference. And it ain't going to be 16, dude. It's going to be 25 if you do that. So you don't, yeah. you don't surrender. You don't do a voluntary repossession. They may take them at some point if you can't get up right up on the payments. Mm -hmm. but, but don't ever voluntarily because you lose control of the sale price. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to work out a settlement for the difference, the deficit balance. So no, no on the surrender -o. Yeah, definitely try to sell on. them. Now, these cars, uh, yeah, $852, $677, that's incredibly too high for car payments. I don't know how far upside down they are again, but the idea here is how quickly can you get some cash stacked up, all right? So what I'm doing is, if I'm you, is I know you're on baby step two, but I would pause baby step two for a second so I could stack up all the money you need to get out of this deal. Because mm -hmm. essentially, this is part of baby step two. So if you've got mm -hmm. a lot of your margin going out to extra payments, stop Stop doing that and start stacking up as much cash as you can. And since you're in baby step two, hopefully that means that you're uh, working overtime. I know you lost your job, but right now, now is not the time to wait for your dream job to come along right now. Get any jobs you can, right? 70, while, while you fill in the gap, of them. right? Yeah. And you take all drive. that money. You can drive because you got a lot of things to drive. That's true. Look, delivery services out the wazoo. <laughs> yeah. Now, put the kids on the motorcycle to deliver pizzas. So you got three things you can do when you're upside down. 
want to stack cash and cover the difference. So you got a uh, truck that's, you know, let's just, I can't even get past his truck. I know, it 852. Makes me want to puke. But the, um, the, her SUV, okay, 677. So she owes 60000 bucks on the SUV. And when they look it up, it's worth fifty. I'm making those numbers up. Mm-hmm. So let's say that may, means you're $10,000 upside down. How do you cover that? Well, one, you stack $10,000. And then you put that with the money with the buyer that the buyer has at 50. And you've got 60. Now you pay off the SUV and they send you the title and you give it to the buyer. Mm-hmm. That's one way. Second way is borrow the difference. That's a good from idea. From your local credit union. Or for God's sakes, six hundred eight hundred and fifty two dollars if you borrow the difference on a credit card you're still come out yeah okay you, you're already eight bazillion dollars in debt even now if your you're credit just, is now shot. you're just one bazillion dollars in debt yeah and now it's just not now you're truckless oh well yeah it's kind of it goes along with being clueless so um yeah even if your geez. credit is shot and you can't get a good rate from a credit union dump just it still dump card. it on a credit card yeah, it's yep. still debt you're just moving the debt around All right. And then the third thing is a modification of that. If your truck loan or motorcycle loans are with your local lender, your local credit union, your local bank, go sit down with them in person and say, hi, I'm unemployed. You're getting ready to get a truck back. You want it? I don't think you do. Turns out, this SUV, we owe sixty thousand on it. With you guys, it's worth fifty. You need to help us get out of this so you don't get stung. This is you talking to your credit union or bank manager mm-hmm. in person, not on the phone, and for God's sakes, not by email. Yeah. Go sit down and look them in the eye, in person. And what we want you to do, Mr. Bank Manager, is allow us to sign the note for the difference when it sells. So we're going to put the, tr- the SUV up for sale for $52,000. It's going to sell for fifty, and we're going to come in here, and we're going to sign an unsecured note for $10,000. Because you already have an unsecured note for $10,000 mm-hmm. because you have a $60,000 loan on a $50,000 asset. So you are already $10,000 unsecured. All we're doing with this transaction is admitting it and lowering our debt by five-sixths. Therefore, we have a higher probability of actually paying you because we can survive. And so you talk them into converting the upside-down portion into an unsecured note, which, by the way, it's already where they are. They're already unsecured for that amount. Yeah. And you can do that if you go in person and present this logic to them, plus... You're, you know, you're a bankruptcy looking for a place to happen right now. Mm-hmm. And in which case they get a whole bunch of new trucks sitting in their driveway at the bank and uh, they're going to get nothing. Yeah. Because they sue you for the deficit. You get nothing in bankruptcy on the deficit. Zero. They do. And something tells me, I don't know, I could be wrong, uh, David, in Oklahoma, but something tells me with these trucks and vehicles, you got more stuff laying around to get rid of. You've got riding you mowers. Think he collects toys. He's got riding mowers. He's got a Peloton. He's got he. There's some stuff that can be sold and liquidated for oh, cash. A bunch of stuff. A bunch of stuff. Look at everything. Don't tell me you have a tractor. I'll kill you. Just don't <laughs> tell me. Just don't tell me right now. Sell Dave, the tractor. Dave choosing violence. <laughs> just sell the tractor. <laughs> No, I mean, I know this guy because I was this guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm just a boy that collects toys. And, yeah. And the problem with a boy that collects toys is we collect payments with them if we're broke people. Do they have a golf cart, too? Uh, they might have a golf cart to sell. And I'm, yeah. They're, 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 yeah, there's, they for sure have a zero turn that's 6000 bucks. <laughs> for sure. I was shocked. I didn't know. That a lawnmower I, costs that much? I didn't know, Dave, until I saw him sitting out there. And I was like, wait a second. You've got to be kidding me. There's a me. lot of lawnmowers that are nicer and more expensive than my first three cars. They have, because my none of my first three cars had Bluetooth, I'm just saying, so. The tractor has Bluetooth? The Zero Turn oh, has Bluetooth? definitely. What? Yeah, wow. because you have to listen to your tunes while you take 10 minutes to mow your yard. She thinks my tractor's sex. That's what y'all oh, are yeah. listening to. There you go. That's it. Uh, no, Sorry. she don't. She thinks you're broke. Ha! <laughs> Because you are. Sorry, Jason. Aldine. Yeah, there we go. This (laughs) is The Ramsey Show.
If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Derek is in San Diego. Hi, Derek. How are you? I'm doing well, Mr. Ramsey. How about yourself, sir? Better than I deserve. What's up? Glad to hear. Glad to hear. Um, basically, I wanted to discuss my uh, current situation with saving money. I'm 28 years old. I make about 105 at my current role and another $25,000 uh, in side work through flipping items. And I am saving about three to four thousand dollars every month after all my expenses. I don't have like a car loan or anything of that nature. And I'm sometimes I worry that, you know, maybe I'm not enjoying life as much as I would like because I'm just so focused on saving money and budgeting and calculating my net worth every two weeks. Um, so I just wanted to get your guidance on when you really decide and how you can tell you know, that you need to start enjoying life more with the money that you've saved. Yeah, one more time. you got 25 coming in on a side hustle. And what's the other? What's your core income? Uh, my W-2 every year is 105000 Okay. So so you're making like 130 k with your side hustle. Correct. And you're saving like four a month. Okay, cool. Yes, yes. I think that's great. You know, one of the reasons that we walk through the baby steps is it kind of gives you um, – guidance for each area of your life and then it also not only the guidance but it gives you the permissions to do what you want to do with your money so in your case if you have no debt right you if, have no debt at all of any kind no, i don't have i have a car that's you know 18 years old and do you have any have a, debt of any kind none none, none, none. at all no student none. loan uh my father is taking care of that uh, that's an agreement we had how much is a student loan? It's uh, sixteen thousand. Whose whose name is it in? It's uh, in my father's and mine. If it if it's in your father's and no, yours, no such thing. It's either a parent plus loan in his name or it's in your name. I believe then it technically is in my name. Yeah, I yeah. think technically it is. If it's in your name, you got to pay that. Kind of like you're in debt. Yeah, you got paid off. Like technically. Okay. okay. So how much money do you have saved? Like how much, how much money do you have stocked aside? Loan? Uh, well, save right now. I have about one hundred and thirty thousand. And how much is the student loan? Sixteen. Uh, it's about sixteen thousand. Good. Pay it off today. Pay it off today. Now, your savings is it? What? Where is it? Is it just sitting in a high yield savings account? Uh, I have some in some Vanguard accounts, and then also four hundred one k, and about sixty thousand in uh, two bank accounts. Okay. okay so the sixty thousand that's in the two bank accounts. Pull, pull some of the 16000 to pay off the loan. How much credit card debt do you have? Uh, none. I just use debit. I've been following you for a long time. Okay. Well, sort of, yeah. So then you, under, okay, then you understand the baby steps. So you're, are, are you already investing 15% or more? Uh, yes, more than that. Okay. Where do you live? Are you renting? Are you owning? Uh, 
I currently rent. Okay, so now we are now. That's why I was saying before we're using the baby steps to figure out what we should be doing, how we should be spending. So at this point, if I'm you, instead of overfunding the fifteen percent, I'd probably start focusing on a down payment because at some point you're going to want to stop renting. You're going to want to have control over that biggest line item on your budget, right? You don't want to rent forever. Rent is going up. It's always fluctuating, right? right. So if I were right. you, instead of doing over fifteen percent, I would stop that, cut it at fifteen percent. And then I would take your extra margin, put some of it to a down payment, right? That's baby step 3B. And then you get to decide how intense you want to be about this, right? You can decide if you're going to just go hard in the paint or if you want to pull back. It's like, you know what? I'm young. I got, you know, I, I, it doesn't have to be that intense at this point. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're, you're running on gazelle intensity. And now that your student loan is paid off, you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. So. Here's what I would do. I'd pay your student right. loan off. Your dad has promised to pay it. I heard you loud and clear. He can pay you back. If he wants right. to pay it, he right. can it's pay you. Deal. But I don't want this in your name anymore. I want it gone. So you pay it off today. So your 105000 in savings has been reduced by 16000 We take a portion of that and allocate it to your emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. The rest of that you can allocate as a down payment. Now, back to your question, when do you enjoy life? Uh, now, now mm -hmm. you need to budget some fun in your budget. All you do is save. And you need to have some fun right. in your budget. And you need to have some generosity in your budget that you don't have, too. Mm -hmm. You need to be helping some other people. Right. You make $130,000 right. a year. You're 20-something years old. You don't have any debt. Yeah, you ought, to have, you ought to have some fun. And you ought to save some and invest some. And you ought to have some generosity. You ought to always have all three things in your budget once you're at your stage. Okay. So for the rest of your life, like Derek, when Sharon and I get a check in from a publisher or something these days, it's extra money. We have a formula we apply to it. OK, we take out, you know, 40 percent for taxes, 10 percent for tithe, that leaves 50 percent. Now, then um, after that, uh, uh, because rich people pay all the taxes, Man, not, when you not, said 40 percent, let me help you with that. OK, <laughs> but anyway, but aside from that, the um, so, so then we apply the other. The other 50% goes to three things, and we have a, a set percentage for more fun, more generosity, and more investing out of that other 50, okay? Like one of my friends does that. He puts 30 in investing, increases his lifestyle by five, and puts 15 into extra generosity, and that gets you to your 50, okay? Mm -hmm. So the, you, know, you work it out. But the, uh, my point is not necessarily the percentages or even that you have to have a formula for it, but you mm -hmm. ought to always have all three in there. Absolutely. And if you have all three in there, then you've got a pretty good balanced life. Because once you're out of debt, other than the house, which you are today, because you just paid off your student loan, if you really follow us now, and then you put, have your emergency funds set aside, once you're Bass Baby Step 3, yeah. you go from intense, which is what you've been living, to intentional. Mm -hmm. Intentional means we're investing some, additional generosity, and additional fun. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and you can – so if you've been wanting to – upgrade the dot 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 the car that, that's the fun because <laughs> his car is old <laughs> yeah okay you got it you, you're driving a beater then yeah let's let's upgrade the car and you probably have the money to do that above your emergency fund mm -hmm. even after you pay off the student loan today yeah he will because he had at least sixty thousand sitting he had 104 oh that's right but some of it was, i think was invested oh well but it was, was it invested in iras he said 401k oh was okay we don't touch that yeah 401K. don't touch the 401k yeah, no, okay okay that's good yeah, but either way, either way, still still going to end up being the same thing. So good question, sir. Good question. Thank you for joining us. So, guys, um, the, the things that we teach, they're, they're everywhere. I mean, you go through Financial Peace University, you get a detailed line-by-line -line thing of, okay, make sure – what you guys talked about on the uh, uh, live stream the other mm -hmm. night, you and Rachel, make sure you don't have a $3,000 tax refund. Right. Okay, adjust that. That's one of the things we teach. Make sure you're not sitting on whole life life insurance. Make sure you're not sitting on investments that are non-retirement while you're sitting on debt on the other side. That's right. Cash that down to 1000 bucks and mm -hmm. get it all clean. You know, start throwing it at your debt. Make sure you're working your debt snowball smallest to largest mm -hmm. balance, not That's interest right. Rate. Interest rate doesn't matter. Make sure you're on a written budget and in agreement with your spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, there's about eight or ten things like that yeah. that you do that you go through if you say you're following us then you're really doing it that's right okay, you're doing the baby steps the baby steps say when you're in one through three temporarily stop 
all investing while you're in baby step two, getting out That's of debt, right. and while you're getting your emergency fund built. But here's the thing. This, all investing, this, not just down. I sort of did. I sort of follow you. You can't. You're either doing your <laughs> thing or you're doing our thing, okay? So this stuff works, but to the, but every time you dial back one of these eight or ten things and don't do that, you slow your butt down. Well, and you I mess yourself care, up. I don't care, but a, it just slows you down. It's a prescription. When you go to the doctor and they say, you're you sick. Here's what you need. And they write it out for you and you take it and cash it in. You don't go and choose. I'm, I'm going to take that one. And I'm not going to take that one. You know what? Don't give me that medicine. Give me this one. If you do that, you'll get sick and you could die. You know, the number, I read this the other day. What book was I reading? I, think, I guess it was Jordan Peterson's book. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asking Deloney about this. I couldn't believe it. The number of people that go to the doctor and the doctor gives them a prescription that never fill it. Yeah, I know. And then the number of people that fill the prescription and don't take a stinking Come one on, of the pills. Come on, man. You're messing with your health. Un I mean, so what was the point? What was I the point? I went to the healer to do nothing that he said. <laughs> That's dumber than crap. I do not understand. Take I the hate prescription. Doctors. I, don't, I mean, I like doctors, but I don't want to go see one. Okay. People die over there. I don't want to go see them. But I, I mean, I want to... I, 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 but if I'm going to go, I'm going to do what the guy take, said. Take the medicine. I mean, God, I do not understand. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, do this stuff exactly. Not because it doesn't affect me. We don't make more money if you do. Just, it's good for you. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is hallow. Hallo is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washall, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for being with us. Melissa is in Mobile, Alabama. Hi, Melissa. How are you? I'm better than I deserve, Mr. Ramsey, and I bet you're just the same. Just the same, yeah. How are things in L.A.? <laughs> well, um, A.L., but yes. Lower Alabama? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, so um, I I've actually just have two quick questions. One, I'm curious what, the, what a good ratio is between home value and and net worth and then secondly i kind of become the uh person in my family that people go to for advice so to help myself be a little bit more efficient should i just start purchasing ramsey plus for all of them <laughs> <laughs> well that would break our heart <laughs> we would hate it uh, that's funny call up we might get you a bulk deal um, <laughs> um the ratio will change as your net worth goes up that's not a set mm -hmm. ratio. Here's here's my point. Um, what we found among millionaires, the typical millionaire, when we studied the 10,000 of them for the Baby Steps Millionaires book, um, was that 
the typical person from one to five million dollar net worth, uh, they oftentimes sounded like we got a million and a half dollar net worth and we have a five hundred thousand dollar paid for house and about a million dollars in our four hundred one ks and Roth IRAs. So about a third of their net worth was in their home when they reached that level. As you increase your net worth, your home should be a smaller percentage. So if you have a hundred million dollar net worth, you wouldn't necessarily want to, you would, you would not want a thirty-three million dollar house. Okay. If you had a hundred million dollar net worth, that would be inappropriate. See, so one third doesn't apply then, right? And if you go down and you say, okay, I got a five hundred thousand dollar net worth, well, a lot of times there you're going to find the house to be about half of it. Mm-hmm. A paid for okay. a paid for house. Okay, so if two hundred fifty thousand dollars house, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in mutual funds in their four hundred one k's at, at five hundred thousand would be fairly normal. But th- that's the point is there's not an exact, but it does it does shift the further up the net worth goes. My home is a very small percentage of my net worth these days, mm-hmm. but I'm really blessed. I mean, the buildings we're sitting in are worth six hundred million. So, um, you know, that's. Certainly, yeah. my home is a small or much small percentage of that. So that it would be absurd for Sharon and I to do that. So uh, uh, so if you were at the point of uh, and I'm asking this question because, Melissa, I don't know where you're going with this. But if you're at the point where like maybe maybe I'm looking to retire, but your home is the greater portion of your net worth and, you know, your your assets, your investments are not, then maybe you'd think about downsizing your home so you can liquidate some of that money. Yeah, you might, because the home is, you know, if, if you're sitting there with a $5 million net worth and a $4 million house, a lot of your net worth is not earning an income then. Right. And unless and you plan you on downsizing. And if you had it in reverse and you yeah. had a million dollar house. 34. I'm sorry? Two point, I'm 34, $2.2 million net worth. I have a $500,000 paid for house today. That's perfect. And I just kind of feel like if I want That's perfect. to upgrade one day, I just don't know what. what you can upgrade. You can, you can upgrade. You can, you know, but I, but I would I upgrade in a, at a 2.2 to a half. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go that far. Okay. Mm-hmm. Unless, you can, but I mean, every dot, you know, the, the high, because that is a, uh, at this point, your home is, yes, it's an asset, but it is a consumption because it's not producing income. Mm. Mm-hmm. So out of the 2.2, every dollar that's in the house is not income producing. So the fewer dollars in the house, and right now you got about one, or you got about what, 1.7 that is producing income, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and your 500 didn't. But if you went up, you know, to seven, 800,000, that wouldn't be out of line at all. And also your net worth is going to be increasing while this happens. Way That's to true. go. You killed it at 34 years old. I know. That's you're right. You're a stud at girl. What? You're amazing. How'd you do that? Uh, <laughs> just, I, don't, I, I don't know. Just the same thing. <laughs> The same thing. I mean, I'm pretty boring. I'm pretty boring. There you go. <laughs> well, I mean, do you, you don't you have a life. I mean, did you, you just invested and stayed out of debt? Tell me what you did. I don't put words in your mouth, but yeah, yes, sir. I mean, to be fair, I, I was never in baby step two, so I'm kind of a fraud. But no, you're no, not. you're not. You're just smart. No, that means I you have good <laughs> parents. You can go. You can go kiss your mama. She helped you. I mean, your family had common sense. They kept you out of debt. Yes, sir. Instead, just, of telling you to buy, tell, of instead of telling you to buy purses, people can't pronounce. Okay, and it just goes to show like <laughs> what a difference it makes when you avoid debt your entire life, as opposed to what I did and what so many people did, which they got into debt and then had to dig themselves out. Then they had to start. What's like, your income? Uh, it's, uh, it's about 300000 What do you do? I'm an engineer. Yeah, uh, number one, number one uh, career mm-hmm. field in the millionaire study. The one that occurred the most often. Second was accounting. Third was teacher. So, yes, yeah, you, yeah. So you, you you fit all the math. You fit all the math, except you're a little bit ahead, like way ahead. You're amazing. Well done, kiddo. That's really good. Very cool talking to you. Yeah, you're going to do fine. You're not going to make a dumb decision here. But um, it's a good discussion because net worth is there's a number that you can look at to tell if you're winning with money. Facts. The FICO score. <laughs> is not a number that you can tell you're winning with money because you could you can get you can your boss could walk in today and give you a yeah. raise of a million dollars a year and your FICO score doesn't change a dime. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's like uh, the FICO score is. Have you ever gone, Dave, to a restaurant and the food looks really good? Like it looks good on the outside and then you eat it 
and it doesn't taste anything like what you were hoping it would taste like. Kind of like those Baham- like those hotels in the Bahamas. The website yes! doesn't look anything like it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a catfish. And that's what the credit score is. You, you go, I've got the a The credit 40. score is the financial catfish. catfish. I on. never. That's it. You heard it here first. I've been trying to figure this out for 30 years. You got it. <laughs> You heard it here first, America. That's it. The FICO score is the financial catfish. The credit card is the financial cigarette. That's right. It's going to end up being the worst thing that you ever did. But back when you were young, all the cool kids did it. I right. love it. Oh, my gosh. I love it. That's exactly what it is. It's a complete lie. It's a complete lie. It's been lie. photoshopped. <laughs> To look like you better than you is. That's right. Because you don't look nothing like that. Oh, I'm no. just saying. Yeah, so the credit score is 100% derived from your interaction with debt. The algorithm that Fair Isaac developed, which is the organization that creates the FICO score, uh, says that every element of the, the creation, the mathematical creation mm-hmm. of your, has something to do with debt. Yeah. You know, how much debt, the how type of debt, are it? you late on your debt? Did you pay off your debt early? Mm-hmm. All these elements run run into your credit score. The If you had a $25 million net worth and zero debt for six months, your credit score would be zero. That's a trip. So your net worth, what Melissa's doing is the way to measure it, the real way. What's That's the opposite right. of a catfish? The, ooh. A bass? No. <laughs> A real fish? <laughs> a real fish, <laughs> not a fake fish. A beauty queen. Yeah, That's, there we right. Go. That's right. That's yeah, right. Your, your uh, net worth is your beauty queen, and your FICO score is a catfish. Ooh. Uh, it's fake winning. Yes. It's fake beauty. It isn't really there. Yeah. Oh, it's an it's God, a, it's an so avatar. Good. Yeah. So good. We can really do stuff with it. We can. This, this will the go catfish. places right here. <laughs> yeah. The internet. The internet's good for something. After all. There you go. Yeah, Great good. analogy. Yeah. So. Yeah, so um, Melissa, at 34 years old, $2.2 million net worth, inherited nothing, is giving away Ramsey Plus, which is Financial Peace University and Every Dollar Together. Yep. That's what that is. She's giving that away in bulk to her family when they ask her financial advice because they very wisely come to her at 34 years old with a $300,000 income wow. and a $2.2 million net worth, 100% debt-free, 500000 of it in her house. They very wisely ask her advice. We always tell you, don't, if your broke friends are making fun of your financial plan, you're right on track. Yeah, that's true. But if you're rich, Melissa mm-hmm. is telling you you're doing good. Now, if Melissa tells you you did good. Yeah. Let me just tell you, she knows what good looks like. Well, she doesn't have to give advice. She just lives advice and they Ooh, see it. And then they just saddle up. They just take, see it. Can we buy you a cup of coffee and tell us how you did mm-hmm. that? That's the fruit. The fruit doesn't lie. That's it. Yeah. It, it's very attractive. Yes. To win. It is. As opposed to fake win. That's right. Catfishing. Yeah. Catfishing. The real. Noodling. The real deal. Noodling. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is The Ramsey Show. What's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us, America. Jay Barshaw, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Phil in Green Bay, Wisconsin, starts this hour. Hi, Phil. How are you? Better than I should be, Dave. How I are you? you? It's the same, sir. How can I help? Well, Dave, um, my question is my wife and I are looking at early retirement, and we've taken time over the last 30-plus years of being together, um, cutting corners, saving as we can, and uh, really want to take time to uh, 
if we can give back more, we do a bit of volunteering uh, locally as well as nationally. And uh, with our kids grown and gone, we want to find out if you think we're in a position where we can uh, not really join the fire crowd, but um, step into um, retirement. Okay, cool. So uh, your house is paid for? Our house is paid for. Good for you. What's it worth? Cool. Uh, four and a quarter. Good for you. Cool. What's the rest of your nest egg look like? Uh, currently, we've got about 2.2 in IRA and 401ks combined. Mm-hmm. We currently have an additional uh, 300k that we've invested in uh, bonds, government bonds currently that uh, vest in October. Mm-hmm. Separately, um, we obviously aren't at the age. Um, I'm currently going to be retiring if we do at 60. My wife will be 57. I'm looking at Social Security deferring out at uh, 62 would be like 23. Mm-hmm. For me, and mm-hmm. it's sixty-seven, thirty-three, fifty, approximately mm-hmm. on the current schedules for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife at uh, sixty-seven would be at nineteen hundred, and we currently have a, a pension that, uh, if I took it early, um, which I'm looking at not doing, but it'd be about uh, twelve hundred a month. Mm-hmm. Um, if I took it at sixty-two, it would push out to uh, about sixteen, and that at sixty-five would be twenty-two hundred. And what do you guys month. need? What do you guys need a month to live well? Um, well, that's a good question. Um, we think that our current budget, as we went through it, we're sitting at around 45000 on a monthly to run our two properties. And uh, we live comfortably, Dave. We've um, you know, always um, made concessions and saved when we could. But, um, yeah, we're thinking that's probably going to be what we're going to need to, to, you know, that doesn't include travel. You yeah, know, that, that's low. Gone, you need double, you need double that. Yeah, you need, you we're thinking that, that is the case, right? Yeah. I mean, you you can survive on forty five, but I want you to thrive. Mm-hmm. Okay, right, no, totally. That's why so, we've done what we've done. Yeah. So two point two were that invested in good mutual funds, and were you accessing it um, if it made eleven point eleven point six percent, which is what the stock market has averaged since it began? Um, you know, that'd be two hundred fifty thousand a year. And right. Where we're at right now, that's kind of yeah. So the other thing I forgot to mention is that we do currently have uh, an emergency fund of 50k in savings. Yeah. Um, it's in a high yield. Um, but again, what we're kind of thinking is um, probably with the four percent rule, thinking that through, that's probably going to be a little low. So wanted to get your direction on, you know, if you think it's viable that we could pull the trigger, and if so, I think the four uh, percent rule is absolute bull crap. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with anything. That's crap that people drew up on the internet. So let, let's talk about the reality. Okay, the reality is for the last 72 years, the consumer price index has averaged 4.2%. That is the measure of inflation. Under Biden, we had one year of 9.6%. But the average inflation rate for the last 10 years is 2.3%. Okay? So inflation, if you average inflation at 4, that's fine. Okay? That, that's a 4% rule you could count on. So in other words, your cost of living, your cost of buying a loaf of bread, buying uh, electricity, gasoline for your car for the next 40 years from 60 to 100 is going to go up at about 4% a year. In the last 10 years, it would have gone up 2.3% a year average. Okay? Now, if you do that and you've got it invested in just an S&P 500, which means you're just performing at the market level mm-hmm. of 11%, 11 minus 4 is 7. So mathematically, if you pull 7 out of your account, which you don't need to do, you don't need the money, okay? Right. But if you if you pulled 7 out of your account and left 4 in there, your account is going to grow by 4% a year. So it will grow by enough to where the next year the 7% will cover the increased cost of goods. You build inflation into the system, and that system right there would run mathematically in perpetuation. Mm -hmm. You would never never use up your your money. So this idea that you can only pull off 4% is absolute hogwash, okay? And so, you know, now, do you need to pull off more than 4%? No, but that's not a rule. That's a rule some financial nerd came up with that is doubling down on hyper-conservative, and they're not using good sets of assumptions. Mm -hmm. So I just call BS on that. Anyway, not fussing at you, but I get this crap from these people all the time, and occasionally I need to hit back, so I just did. Okay, now, the uh, so what would I do? I would set up your accounts to draw 90000 a year minus your pension minus your social security 
which probably That's is nice. going to be you're going to pull off sixty thousand. So you're doubling your you're doubling your. Income. And so if you're pulling That's sixty nice. grand off of two million, you're pulling off three percent. You follow me? Yeah. Oh, no, I do. Yep. And, yeah, and then that, that, that two million is still going to keep growing. Right on. No, I follow you, and I think we aren't planning to tap into that because, again, we've got the 300K that we, you know, rolled in that'll vest and, and mature in October, and um, that's kind of something we can fall back on. We're thinking that we'll probably roll that back for another, you know, if it maintains at five or above, um, just to have access to that. When you uh, say fall back on, what do you mean by be, that? Why would it be a five or above? What are you talking about, the stock market? Um, well, no, I'm thinking that we, in the event that we would have some need for um, because with our kids and stuff, we've, uh, you know, obviously um, they're grown and gone and professionalized. But if we wanted to, for example, uh, vacation for a winter in Florida or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, additional funds that we'd have beyond our original, um, you know, 60, 70,000 that you're talking about after pension and Social Security, if you follow yeah. me, it was just additional cash. And we're thinking rather than and the again, 300K, though, could be sitting in an investment. It doesn't have to be a 5%. Right, right. Yeah, he could right, put no, it. No, I follow you. That's why I said I don't want I don't want to deal with five percent numbers. Five percent numbers are for short term money. You make five percent on a high yield savings account right now, and that's stuff you need to access in the next six months, mm-hmm. not the next sixteen years. So you got you got enough money. You're not going to be fooling with your money, dude. You need to keep it all fully invested mm-hmm. and just pull what you need to pull off the income out there. And you can use whichever source you want to use. I don't care. But I would be in good growth stock mutual funds. That's what I am. I'm sixty three. That's where my stuff is. I haven't pulled a dime out. It's all sitting in good growth stock mutual funds. Mm-hmm. I'm not even pulling an income off of it because I'm still working. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the the uh, but the point being that that um, you know you can count on like this year. I mean, I don't even look at the S and P this week, but it was like 17 percent the last 12 months you would have made mm-hmm. if you were in the Standard and Poor, which is the stock market. If you're invested in good mutual funds, while everybody's sitting around whining about the Biden economy and how horrible everything is, and the interest rates are ridiculous, and the mm-hmm. housing markets have gone to crap, and everybody's talking about all this stuff, meanwhile, your freaking 401k went up 17%. <laughs> Nobody ever talks about that. Yeah. Well, it's not good. It's, 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 it's good, good news. news. Good news isn't broadcast. And by the way, if I were him, I would wait till he's 65 on that pension. He doesn't need the money, so he may as well wait so he can get more of it. As long as everybody's healthy, I would push off retire. I'd push off the pension and the social. Mm-hmm. As long as everybody's healthy, this is the Ramsey Show. It's a competitive home buying market, but there's a way you can get an edge. Churchill Mortgage works with you to understand your budget and your goals. And the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge offers you fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, Churchill has bumped up their seller guarantee to $10,000, giving your offer the best chance of being accepted and helping you win in today's market. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Tarong is with us in West Palm Beach, Florida. Hey, Tarong, what's up? Hey, uh, Mr. Ramsey, how are you doing today? Better than I deserve. How can we help? All right. So basically, uh, I'm 32. Uh, I just turned 32 years old. I um, got married last year uh, with my beautiful wife. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, we, well, this past, this April, uh, we decided to get of our own house. Uh, currently, we living in it. We have a very traditional value where we live with of our parents. But well, we, and at the time that we couldn't find a house, so she moved down here. Uh, after we got married, um, we decided to buy a house. The house won't be uh, built until next year. So we uh, we talked, we spoke with the builder and the community um, that the new community complex is building that we purchase a house. The house with the closing and everything is going to be about seven hundred and thirty-one thousand, and we 
me and my wife uh, have uh, I I in my opinion I would say we have a pretty good financial standpoint but with this a lot of this interest rates and a lot of things is like keep going up it kind of like doubts me so what we decided on agreed upon was we're going to be putting about 275 uh down payment on the house so she has a very good job she's a nurse manager uh she brings uh six figures in and I'm a uh, I, uh, I'm a basically a financial advisor. Uh, I bring somewhere around six figure as well. Okay, so, so you have a two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollar income or a four hundred thousand dollar income. What kind of six figure are you talking about? She has so she's a nurse manager. She brings about one hundred and fifteen thousand. Okay. What do you make? And I I make about hundred and I'm on right now. I looked it up. I'm on track to hit about one hundred and thirteen thousand. Okay, so Good. two two thirty. All right. And yeah. uh, you have 200000 saved or more. How much do you have saved? Uh, so currently, uh, well, we don't have 100. We don't, we're not going to put 275 until sometimes next year, probably June or July of next year. Right now I have uh, in my investment account about $122,000. And obviously we're going to have a track. Uh, we have a plan in place where from now uh the time that we booked on April until next year, we're going to be taking 90% of the income, putting it to the side for the house. And you have no so debt? That will, uh, I, I, have, uh, I don't have debt. Uh, I, uh, I never went to the college or anything. I pretty much work my whole life out mm-hmm. and everything. So uh, this was like, for me, it, I, I, I've been uh, watching your show and I've been like listening to how you give advice. I've been following that. Like, okay, so basically eight, everything you eight. can scrape together before the closing is a couple of hundred grand. You're going to put that as your down payment. Absolutely. So you're going to have a yeah, $500,000 mortgage with a $230,000 income. Sounds good. How can we help? Yep. Mm-hmm. So basically, like, what scares me here is, like, where now my me and my wife, like, talk about it. Like, you know what, because I keep track of all this interest rate, what we're at. Are we doing well in our planning and everything? Where she and I are in, like, we're in the age of early 30s. We're, like, she wants to have, like, family planning, set aside something for kids, like, college saving. I'm not sure if we could, like, get all this covered within the boundary. Are you worried that you won't have it? Like, once you get into this house payment, you won't have enough margin to do the things that you want to do, like have a family and, you know, just live life. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So she's all about traveling. I'm not fully all, like, all traveling and everything. No, you're a tightwad. Uh, yeah, look, with, yeah. With, with what you just laid out for us, you're well within the bounds. We always say for the payment not to be more than 25% of your take-home pay, you're do, are you doing this on a 15-year fixed? That's the only other part of this discussion. Uh, uh, no, it's going to be 30-year. No, it's going to be 15. That's that's where you need to – that's – yep. You need to be on 15-year. Mm-hmm. It's a lower interest rate to start with. And also, you need to get a game plan where you have a house that's going to be paid off someday. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, you, if so, you'll live on a written – detailed budget that the two of you agree to you can close Mm -hmm. on this house and you should have plenty of margin to have Mm -hmm. a decent life and continue Mm -hmm. and just continue to invest on a Mm 15-year fixed rate and your income is going to continue to go up exactly and if the interest rates drop in the future refinance and get rid of a higher rate because you could still be in a higher interest rate environment by next april that's That's possible i'm hoping they'll come down by then we will be in a presidential election year and they have a tendency to go down in those years so but um no guarantee of that but uh yeah so if if you end up closing in the seven eight percent world and then they drop drop Mm -hmm. to six we'll refinance it later but in the meantime, dude, take out a 15. You can do this. You've got margin. Let me tell you what I hear, okay? I hear a financial guy who's really good with math, and you've converted that to worrying. Mm. Don't wring your hands. Plan. Enjoy the ride. Plan. Enjoy the ride. But no plans ever come out exactly like you've got them projected 18 years into the future with your spreadsheet at 2 a.m. <laughs> right. You can't. You Go can't to live sleep, like that. Plan. Enjoy. Have peace. It's going to be okay. You're going to be fine. Eric is with us in Richmond, Virginia. Hi, Eric. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave and Jade. How are you all doing today? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Good. I am fired up. I uh, just got married in May, my wife and I. 
and um, we just started Financial Peace University a couple weeks ago. Cool. Um, it, and so we started, and we did step one. We're done with that. Good. But in step two, we're a little scared. Um, Good. Just having the thousand dollar emergency fund there. It's not we enough. Think it's going to take us. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not. not it's scary. We had a big emergency. It's scary. Up. It's what supposed to be scary. Yeah. Here, here, here. What, what do we do if we have like a five thousand dollar, you know, pet bill or transmission bill? Pet oh bill. God. What's going to happen? Let me let me break this. Out. I just talked about this last night. When you get to this stage that you're at, when you have a thousand dollars, and this is for everybody listening, not just uh, Eric. It changes the way you think, okay? When you, before you had the thousand dollars, right, and you had a credit card or you had this fake emergency, uh, this fake safety net there, right? If something happens, the dog gets yeah. sick, right? And the vet says it'll be five thousand dollars. You just fork over the five thousand because you're not thinking straight. You're thinking, oh, I'll put on my credit card. Oh, I'll do this. But when you have a thousand dollars and things like that come up, your brain starts working a lot more efficiently, you start becoming a lot more creative, and you start realizing what's a need, what's a want, can I be resourceful? Is there another way to go about this? And that's the beauty of a thousand dollars. It's like when the dryer goes out before, when you had credit cards, it's like, well, I'll just go down to Lowe's and get me a new dryer and let me get the newest, nicest model. Right. But when you have a thousand, you go, oh my gosh, my mother-in-law lives up the street. I'm going to go over there and dry the clothes for a little while until I can save up a couple thousand dollars. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to buy this one on Craigslist, or I'm going to buy this one that's on sale at Home Depot. Right. Your brain starts working right. better and you start getting creative. And that's how this works. Yeah, how, how much debt do you guys have? Uh, between student loans and credit cards, um, we're at about eighty-eight thousand. And what's your household income? Uh, after taxes, we're a little over a hundred, like one hundred two. Okay, all right. And um, how much do you owe on your car? Um, I only owe eight thousand, and my wife is at fourteen. Okay, and that's included in the eighty-eight. It is. Okay, yeah. all right. And so you're debt free in two years. That's that's the plan. Yeah. And I've I mean, already gotten yeah, a beans and rice, rice and beans. So and you know, here, here's yeah. what's the number of emergencies that happen over one thousand dollars in a two year period of time is very very small. If it comes up, deal with it then. Mm -hmm. But it's not going to come up, okay? And um, uh, and you'll be shocked and amazed. My husband and I had a thousand dollar. Did you ever have a thing when you were you were seven years? That's what I'm saying. Did you go seven years with a thousand dollars? Well, yeah. I mean, we'd use it if there was an I know, emergency but I mean, and build it back up. Did you ever go over it? No. What you? I mean, how'd you? If you had a two thousand, what did you do? You just have to make it. You have you to figure out a way to make it work it. and then stack up yeah. cash. You talk to the vet and go, Fluffy's. You know, we're gonna do something else with Fluffy. Oh, please. Yeah. By the way, set a <laughs> limit ahead of time with the pets. Okay, and then yeah. there's it decides for you. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, they're they're. I I love my dog almost as much as I love my kids, but they're a dog. They're not a kid. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have to keep this somewhat in perspective. So yeah. I'm not trying to get all you pet I know. people, all you fur people on my in my. You do have to set limits here, though. But oh well. And you have to decide: can you afford a pet? You might not be able to afford a pet. This is the Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business, too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
Jade Washall Ramsey personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Trampas and Jill are with us. Hi guys, how are you? Hey, Good, Dave, how, how are you? you? Welcome, welcome. Where do y'all live? Knoxville. Knoxville. Knoxville, Tennessee. And how much debt have you paid off? Just a little over 126000 Okay. Oh, very good. How long did this take? 22 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? We went from 110 to a little over 210 Very good. Good. What do you all do for a living? Uh, I'm a deputy safeguards and security manager for a DOE subcontractor at the Oak Ridge National Lab. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I take care of him. <laughs> ah. <laughs> He takes care of all of us, guarding the radioactive secrets, and you take care of him. It's a fair trade. It's a fair trade. Very good. Very good. So uh, what kind of debt was the $126,000? We had everything from uh, fifth-wheel campers to motorcycles to cars to Mm. IRS. You know, no student debt or anything like that, but uh, lots of toys. Lots lots of of toys. 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 Normal. So uh, what happened? What happened 22 months ago? What was the wake-up? You did. Uh oh, how did I, how did I do that? <laughs> well, I mean, we, we never felt a pinch of of being broke. We never understood being broke. We we never had a an aha moment because you know in my in my mind we weren't broke. We had plenty of money. We made our payments each month. It all month. came in and all went out. Yeah, we're okay. Yeah, I mean everything's good. So um, I was actually started listening to your show on the way home from work, just trying to find some kind of entertainment, something besides music to listen to. So. Uh, I come on, and you were going through a, one of the Dave rants, and you were just, I mean, hammering somebody. I'm like, this guy's pretty cool. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to him. He's fun, you know. And uh, uh, so we were listening for more entertainment value than I was educational value at the time. Until Uh-oh. he got mad at you. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got personal. Yeah, you, you did. did. What, what, the, where, what, what did I step on? You, you called me an idiot and a moron and a broke brother in law. <laughs> and a broke brother in law. <laughs> <laughs> no, <it>. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I told a friend of mine, I said, that Dave Ramsey guy, he called me an idiot today. And he said, well, did you talk to him? I said, no, he was just on the air. He's, he's talking about you then, not to you. I said, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> talking about something you did. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what did you do that I was picking? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, everything. I'm just what yeah. you said. I'm the broke brother-in-law. I'm yeah. the broke neighbor. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I was a moron with money. You know, I, I thought I told her, I said, you know, we make too much money, and and we're too smart for for this. You yeah. Know? yeah. And like I said, I never what felt that. What did y'all pants. do then? Did you did you sell some of the toys? Uh, n- n- we sold our camper, but. Mm-hmm. We were upside down in the camper, so we sold it and still had to come up with thirty thousand dollars. Good mm-hmm. lord! Yeah. Okay. So them them things are. Yeah. How much of the hundred and twenty-six was the camper? Thirty. No, you said you had to come up with thirty. You were upside down thirty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay, but I mean, but you owed more than thirty on it. Yeah, we owed almost ninety on. That's it. what I meant. So yeah. of yeah, the one twenty-six, ninety was the camper. Yes. Sir. Wow. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So then you had to come up with a thirty, and then what? Uh, yeah, that yeah, that's a big move right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Okay. So that one, that was the, whoa, that yeah. was emotional when that left. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we we took pictures of us with a guy driving off, just waving at the camper on the way by, and just you know, <laughs> uh, take it, go. <laughs> go, 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 before I change my mind. Yeah. 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 Wow. So what did it look like? Okay, you, you're you're angry because Dave's called you every name in the book, and you're like, yeah. you're like, we have to get on board. Jill, what did you say? Were you like, yes, I've been waiting for this moment, or were you like, um, I'm not ready? Like, tell me, tell me more about that. Getting <laughs> said, on the same page. I said what? What did you just say to me? <laughs> no, I, I was okay with it. You were? Uh, yeah, I was okay with it. I knew we needed uh, we needed to do something, and uh, and we made it happen. So what did that look like? What was that? Getting on a budget? Were you trimming back? Uh, well, he he sat down and he did. He's better with the the numbers and the the, the planning. I'm the mm-hmm. nerd. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so he sat down and and he said, okay, I think this is what we need to do. This is how we need to do it. And, and we just started. Uh, I started clipping coupons. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I started, um, which I'm not a big shopper. Like I I've never been one to go out and spend a lot of money on clothes. Sure. You know things like mm-hmm. that. Um, so that wasn't an issue. But I did start thrifting and yard selling a little bit more than I used to. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I love, love to that. do that and right. uh, uh, DIY and some stuff. So that worked out. So. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it's very good. good. How's it feel now that you're free? <sighs> Amazing. How long have yeah. you been married? 15 years. Yep. Okay. We'll be 16 in January. Have you January. ever been debt free even while you're married? No. 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 Way to go. I, I wrote a check on my 49th birthday, which was two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I wrote that check on my 49th birthday, and we're debt free. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And I'm so, you know, I'm almost, I wanted to do it by the time I was 50. Yeah, you did. Uh, and and, yeah. and we did, we did it at 49. Yeah. You did. Excellent. Wow. Excellent. 
Man, way to go, you guys. Thank All you. All right. When somebody says, how did you do that, what do you tell them the key was? I, we just we had the plan and stuck to it. We downloaded the Every Dollar app. Yep. We stuck to our budget, you know, and there were... Uh, you know, I was listening to the shows and stuff, and you uh, you would give us some hints on what to do with the budget and moving some things around. And we spent a little more this month on this, so we pulled it from somewhere else. Um, but just sticking to that budget and sticking with it and believing in yourself, yeah, and believing what you can do. And 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 with me, I'm always the when I get mad, I get determined. And mm-hmm. like Come I said, yeah, I wasn't mad at Dave for calling me an idiot, but I was mad <laughs> at me for beating him. <laughs> and then I got, I got mad at the debt and, and that's, and that's what happened. I, we just got mad. We stuck to it and said, this is it. I'm, I'm ready to kick it. I'm done. And, uh, and, and that kind of determination just really, and we had us. to really, really, you know, you have to work together. You can't, if you know, you get, you start to get frustrated, like, you know, I really want to do this or I want to do that. Well, we can't. We can't go on that vacation. And it's like, okay, you know what? Yeah. We can't. We just can't do it right now. And, on on and her 47th birthday. <laughs> tell me what, tell me what you remember. Okay. On oh, my 47th. I love to, everything's a dollar when I go yard sale. Oh, it was just a dollar. It was just a dollar. I, I got this for a dollar. So nothing's in the budget. I can't do this. Can't do that. Um, so my mother-in-law gave me a uh, birthday card. And it had 47 one dollar bills in it, and ah. she said, "This is in the budget." 47 one time. You get yeah. 47 yeah. things. She said, "Spend it at a you know thrift store, yard sale, or whatever." So I thought that was that's pretty cute. cool. That's, yeah. cool. that's very well done. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Very. Th- that means she was cheering you on. Oh, oh yeah, her yeah. family. Yeah, my mom, his family, parents. Yeah. yeah, they're yeah. great. That's very good. Yeah, very cool. All right, I've been doing debt-free screams for uh, almost 30 years here on the air. You're the first Trampus. Oh, good. That I've had. I'm a first. So that means uh, your mom and dad must have been like fans of the Virginia. Yeah. Virginia, that's where. Yeah. I got it. Yep. that's an old TV show. Yeah, you got to yeah. be old to know what that yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. I, I was a month early, and they didn't have a name picked out yet. And when mom went to have me, dad was still waiting in the waiting room and watching the TV show. And the Virginian came on. There it is. And that was his favorite character. So when the nurse came out, they said, "We need a name." He said, "Name him Trampus. We'll change it later." It was a great character. Too. <laughs> that's a great character, and never changed it. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's good. I like that. That's fun. Congratulations, you Thank two. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we've got a copy of, of the Baby Steps Millionaires book for you. That's the next step in your process. The Total Money Makeover book. You can use it or give it away. And the Financial Peace University membership. Same thing. Use it or give it away. That's the living give box you either live it or you give it or some of each mm-hmm. we'd love to have you do all that thank you guys for coming hey you're heroes thank, thank, thank you. you so much i'm very proud good. of you I'm thank proud you. of you you're thank amazing you. Thank very you. very cool yeah that's a tough thing y'all did mm-hmm. it's really hard and it's really worth it i'm proud of you trampus and jail knoxville <laughs> tennessee 126,000 paid off in 22 months making 110 to 210 count it down let's hear a debt free scream three, three two, two one we're, we're debt free, free. yeah That's how you do it. Absolutely amazing. You never know how those rants are going to be taken. Look. He was yelling at me. He was calling me names. That's the way I felt back in the day. Did you really? A little bit. A little bit. You called me dumb. Did I? Through the magic of the radio waves. Through the uh, you, uh, through the millions of people that were listening, you were the one I selected. Yes. You know? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you know, Dave, Dave, you have that power. Your voice follows people around. <laughs> it haunts you. It haunts you. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's also why I have such a fan club on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I can breed trolls like nobody can breed well. a troll. I'm just telling you. <laughs> That's your spiritual uh, gift. It is. <laughs> but the people that know us know that uh, the only reason we would do something like that is because we love you. We're there to help you. And if you think otherwise, you just misunderstood the whole idea. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, 
you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888 Christy is in Phoenix. Hi, Christy. How are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Well, my husband and I own a franchise. It's a restaurant. Um, don't really want to say the name, but we have a business loan, a pretty hefty business loan. Which, so our, we owe two thirty on the business, mm-hmm. and we have about that exactly two thirty equity in our home. Mm-hmm. Would you sell your home to pay off the business loan because the interest rate just keeps going up and up and up, and our payments are now? We've owned this restaurant for three and a half years, and we started paying twenty five hundred a month, and now we are at forty five hundred a month because of the interest rate. Mm-hmm. Would you sell your house to pay off your business loan? Are you making money? Yes, we're making money, but how much? What's your pro, what's your taxable income in twenty twenty three going to be? Like take home? No taxable yes. income. What are you going to pay taxes taxable on? Income. What's your tax return um, going to tell me you made the real profit of the real profit? Maybe like seven hundred thousand. Why don't you just pay it off? You're going to pay taxes on $700,000 profit? Maybe not. That may be not profit. That might be gross rev. All the numbers. That might be <laughs> gross revenue. Here. That might yeah, be gross Yeah, it might re- be. You're right. What do you take home? Do you know that? Out of the so business. We pay ourselves a salary from the business. Yes. What is that? And, and that's about um, 45000 each? And then he retired from the Army, so he has whoa, a... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Each? Sorry. Um, no, together. So you make a $45,000 salary. Okay. At the end yeah. of the year, was there $600,000 laying around in an account? No. Then you did not make a $700,000 profit. Okay, then no. I'm, yeah. I'm really... Pro- down profit is what you... The what numbers. the business... Not pro- prof- gross revenue is the total money coming in. Mm-hmm. Then minus expenses equals profit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I hope to God you made more than $45,000 on $700,000 worth of income. Do you guys have money laying around in any savings for the business? We do. How much? So so right now, to get us through our winter, we live where it's kind of, it's hard to make it through the winter. So we have 50000 to get us through the winter, this coming winter. And 25000 we just put away for savings, and then we have another, that's in a savings account, and then we have another 25000 in cash. Okay. So it's a little hard for me to tell you what to do, because I can't figure out whether you're making any money or not. You've been doing this three years, and it sounds like you've gathered up about it. my husband was here, and then he had to go to the dentist, otherwise yeah. he that's knows okay. all that. He does all that's the okay. numbers and stuff. I'm, so here's, yeah. here's the, let me kind of give you the concept, and then you and your husband can talk through it. The concept is I would sell my home only if I can't figure out a way to clear this debt in about three years, which means you would need okay. to make more than, more than you know, you, 
after you pay your bills and eat, you'd need to make an extra seventy-five to a hundred thousand dollars a year to throw at this loan. Okay. And I don't know if this restaurant is producing that or not. It doesn't sound like it is. So it does sound like you have made a mistake and you've overpaid for this franchise and this mess you've gotten yourself into. And it probably cost you your home. You're probably going to have to sell your home or you're going to end up bankrupt. Is this the only mo- is the business the only money coming in or do you guys have other side jobs? She, he has he had military yeah, so retirement. He, okay. He has a retirement. military retirement. Yeah. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you guys need to figure out. But it sounds like you guys are making maybe a hundred thousand dollars a year off of this total, including the money you're setting back and the money you're taking home and all that. Um, and that yeah. that means you're probably going to have this debt around for four or five, six years if you keep your house. So the fact that you overpaid for this restaurant, you got excited, and the fact that you went into debt to buy the restaurant. Uh, and, which you should not have done, by the way, um, then, then I would not have done this deal. Uh, uh, but you're there now. Yeah. Those things are forcing you to sell your house. Um, so it's as if at the beginning of this whole project, you said, I want to own this restaurant more than I want to own my house. You didn't mm-hmm. mean to say that, but that's what, it com- it's, what it's going to come down to. And so I, unless you guys can figure out that you can pull a hundred thousand, seventy-five to a hundred thousand, out, out of the business mm-hmm. and throw it at the debt, and still pay your bills at home and eat for the next two to three years. If you can do that for three years, you're out of debt. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and it, but I don't think this thing's generating that. Now maybe it will start. But the fact that you have down winters in the restaurant business is weird. Yeah, I I felt the in same Phoenix. thing. Yeah, I had I had more questions, but you know I think. Yeah. Forty five to to earn forty five thousand a year off the business just it's doesn't not, feel worth it. It's not. They're they're making more than that, but not much. Yeah. All right. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Will is with us. Will is in Atlanta, Georgia. Hi, Will. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me. Sure. How can we help? Um, I have thirty thousand dollars in gold and silver. I'm sorry. And I have twenty. <laughs> and I have twenty five thousand dollars in debt, mm-hmm. and I was wondering if I should pay that off. Yes. Thanks for calling. Because I get married. <laughs> I get, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. I get married in nine days, and my pastor and I we went through marriage counseling, mm-hmm. and he recommended recommended me to talk to you. Okay. And I just wanted to see. Yeah. Let, let, let's reverse it. Okay. Let's say you were debt free and you were getting married in nine days. Would you go borrow $30,000 to buy gold and silver nine days before you get married? Well, no, not. no, you would not. So we're going to revert. We're going to reverse engineer and it'll give you the instant answer that Jade gave you. Sell the gold and silver now today and be debt free. And before your honeymoon, it'll change the way you walk. It'll change the way you mm-hmm. talk. The ritual's over yeah. the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. That's what your pastor was talking about. And when you are no longer a slave, you can devote yourself to your new bride mm-hmm. and to your old bright and shiny future. And it's not bright and shiny because it's gold or silver. It's bright and shiny because you're smart enough to never do this crap again. Yeah. The next time you start investing in baby step four, make sure you're going into mutual funds and not gold, not silver, not single stocks. Well, we're going to give you Financial Peace University. Uh, which is our nine-week class on how to handle money as our wedding gift. You and your wife go through that after you get home from the honeymoon, okay? Some people are so nerdy, they do that on their honeymoon. That's, That's just weird. weird. Stuff. Yeah. Don't do that. I don't want to go on. I don't. <laughs> That's I'm on not the, the videos. Good weird. I don't want to go on the honeymoon with you, okay? <laughs> so wait till you get home. But we're going to give it to you for free and get you signed up and uh, get you going on that. So open phones at 888-825-5225. Those of you that want to know a little bit more about money, we're doing a free live stream of our first two hours of the Smart Conference in Chicago Saturday morning. We would love to have you do that with us. Uh, Jade will be speaking and George Camel will be speaking in the first two hours, and we're live streaming those two talks completely free. Mm-hmm. Just go to RamseySolutions.com slash live. 
and uh, we'll get you signed up for that and get you going. You do not want to miss that. Dr. John Deloney's book, Building a Non-Anxious Life, is rapidly building its uh, sales to be a number one bestseller. Mm -hmm. It comes out uh, October the 3rd, just a couple of weeks from now. And if you want all the pre-sale goodies that we give you, $20 for the book, $75 worth of goodies. If you pre-buy it, you can get all of that now at RamseySolutions.com. Lots of things happening right now. That's right. Around here, uh, a lot of things happening. You can come to the Smart Conference if you're in the Chicago area. We'll be there Friday, heading up there in the morning, and we'll be there Friday evening and Saturday all day and we'd love to have you there's a few tickets left you can still get in ramseysolutions.com slash events in other words a lot of the stuff you want to do you'll find over at ramseysolutions.com we appreciate you guys hanging out with us this is the ramsey show up guys it's jade if you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the ramsey way just go to ramseysolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter again that's ramseysolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thanks for jumping in, America. It's a free call. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888 888- 825-5225. Lisa is with us in Colorado Springs. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hi, Jade. Uh, I'm a longtime listener and a studier of the um, baby steps, and, uh, but a first-time caller, so I'm excited to be here. Well, thank you for being with us. How can we help? Uh, of course. So my question is... At what point do you decide either to declare bankruptcy or to pay off old slash bad, like try to pay off debt? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, old bad debt can usually be settled for pennies on the dollar. Um, okay. uh, to give you an example, we bought uh, a couple of years ago as a Christmas present for our team, uh, we bought $10 million dollars worth of old bad medical debt repo debt and credit card debt and um there were um eight thousand accounts and uh we bought that for two hundred fifty thousand bucks and we called all the people and forgave their debt that was our christmas oh, present so cool. it, it was so fun <laughs> it was uh, it's so fun yeah. and we got we have a thousand team members each of them got to call eight people and tell them that jesus forgave their debt and so um wow. so it was pretty cool it was kind of fun but the point is not to brag on us but the point is 10 million dollars for two hundred fifty thousand. that's, that's uh, two and a half cents on the dollar wow that's two and a half percent is what we paid for it Okay. Okay. So if you had one of those debts and you called one of those people, they would have settled that for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar easy. So if the, one of those was a $10,000 debt and uh, we bought it for $25, you could have bought it probably for 100 or $150, you know, something like that, right? Or we bought it, okay. a $10,000 debt, we bought it for 250 bucks. You could have paid it off probably for 1200 So point is pennies on the dollar. So let's, mm-hmm. let's back up and talk about the real world with you. How much old bad debt do you have and what kind of debt is it? Excellent. Okay, so it's actually not me. I'm, I'm calling for, uh, because I, I'm dealing with my mom and my dad. Okay. So my dad passed away um, back at the beginning of the year. I'm sorry. Um, he, yeah, um, you know, but God is good, and I know where he's at. So yeah. <laughs> we're just celebrating his life is, and trying to uh, wade so through. How much old bad debt do they behind. have? 
So he had, um, between him and my mother, about $120,000. On what that, kind of debt? Um, it's 5 to 10 plus years old, all consumer debt. Like credit cards? Yeah, it would be credit cards. Um, he had a small business, and um, his small business, he used debt to finance, you know, to finance his business. And so, yeah. so does um, mom have any money? Right. So mom has um, about twenty thousand dollars in savings. Mm-hmm. Does mom? Does mom is, have a house? Mom has a house. It's worth about three hundred thousand, um, but it has a um, reverse mortgage on it for about one hundred and forty-five. Mm-hmm. What state um, is she in? She's in Texas. Okay. Yeah, she does also have some, um, some, I would call it a delinquent debt. So that was also used to try and split the business. That's actually all in her name. And it's, I would say, 90 plus days old. And there's about 15,000 of that. Okay. All right. Does anyone in your family have any money, you or brothers or sisters? Um. I, we're working. My husband and I are working through the baby steps right now, so we have um, we have nothing that can't uh, no, nothing that's not going to debt right now. Okay. Um, my, I have a an older brother who is newly married and is saving, so the answer yeah. to him is no. And my old, my younger brother, I actually have no idea. Right. How, how old's your mom? She is seventy three. Okay. And All right, let, point, let me talk you back through income, this uh, philosophically. Okay bankruptcy, mm-hmm. um, I've been through it when I was in my 20s. It's horrible. Right. Okay. Yeah. Ph- philosophically, it's right on the same list as divorce. Right. It's a horrible thing. It's never a good thing. It's never a pleasant thing. It's not something you want to do. And if you think you might be facing it, you try everything else to try right. to avoid it before you do it. You want to pull out all the stops, Right. Never, never right. do it. That's your absolute last, 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 last resort. Because it's not a wealth building tool. It, there's a lot of unintended consequences that come at you because of it. it you know, it, you don't want to do yeah. it if you can avoid it. Okay, just like you don't. You know, like you're talking to a young couple that's had a fight. You don't. You're not divorced. You just had a fight. Okay, so uh, it's the same thing. And and so. You know, for number one, I put it in that bucket. Number two, just like divorce, Dave Ramsey never tells you to do it. There are, I've yeah. never in 30 years been on the air and said, you need to file bankruptcy or you need to file divorce. The one exception on divorce is if somebody is getting, uh, I have told a couple of ladies that are getting beat, getting, you know, domestic violence situations that they need to file divorce. They need to get out of there. Okay. But mm-hmm. other than that, I don't tell people to do stuff like that. They make their own decisions. I t- I just understand if they end up doing it. I, I'm not mad at you if you end up doing it. I went through it, but I wouldn't not divorce by bankruptcy, but I would tell you not to if there's any way you can. So all of that right. to say, all of that to say, does your mom have an income? She uh, receives eight, like $800 a month for Social Security, and then she drives Lyft. Okay. Um, if I remember correctly, in Texas, your it. home is protected in bankruptcy. In bankruptcy, yes. In yes. Texas. In Texas and Florida both have 100% house. homestead. And uh, yes. so if she files bankruptcy, they won't touch her home. They, and they will allow right. her to keep X number of dollars of cash, probably five or 10000 but not much. And everything else would right. be collected by the bankruptcy courts and used towards her debts. What I would attempt to right. do is to help her to begin to solve this for somewhere around a dime on the dollar. Okay. If she can make this all go away for ten or $12,000 and a lot of phone calls by you on her behalf, okay. beating the crap out of these people, and you're going to have to beat the crap out of them. You're going to have to say, right. widow lady in Texas files bankruptcy, you get nothing. This is going to be the headline right. if you screw with me. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. offering you this. Don't mess with me. You better take the deal. Because if you don't take the deal, I'm going to hang up the phone and go to the next one. And when the money runs out, you're going to end up holding nothing, zero. So go through and try to settle these 10, 15 cents on the dollar. And I think you can help her avoid it. But, boy, you got an uphill battle. You do not have a lot of resources to settle this with. So it could be done, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. 
If you run out of money, you run out of patience, you run out of steam, she may end up filing, and I won't be mad at her. But it won't be, but I, but I would try everything else first. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is hallow. Hallo is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Hallow is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey. Jade Washaw, Ramsey Personality, is our co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jade, let's talk bankruptcy for a minute. Uh, Chapter 13 is the most popular type of bankruptcy. That's a repayment plan where you pay back a portion of your debt. Uh, Some debts 100%. If they're uh, secured debt, like a car loan, it's paid back 100%. Mm -hmm. Uh, if it's a student loan, it's paid back 100%. If it's a credit card debt, a medical bill, it can be paid back at pennies on the dollar. But you pay payments according to your income in a Chapter 13 over 60 months, five years. And then the debts that were partially paid in the plan, the rest of them are forgiven and uh, in bankruptcy. But you have filed bankruptcy. Now, sometimes Chapter 13 people don't think that's a bankruptcy because it's a payment plan. No, you filed <laughs> federal bankruptcy. That's a chapter 13 bankruptcy. A chapter 12 bankruptcy is a farm situation, very unusual bankruptcy. A chapter 11 is a very large bankruptcy. Usually you see corporations do that. Mm -hmm. Big companies do that. Like they'll, uh, like a bed, bath and beyond, they'll follow chapter 11 and they'll dump 75% 75% of their stores and they cut all the all the leases loose mm-hmm. and they keep the profitable stores mm-hmm. yeah, and then they restart the company towards after bankruptcy. So it's a reorganization <laughs> for a large amount of money, typically a large company, a business, an ongoing concern. The When people think of bankruptcy, generally what we think of is chapter seven bankruptcy, which is total bankruptcy. Whew. And that's where, quote unquote, all your debts are wiped out. Only they're not, Not but that's the thing. So Mm. student loans are not bankruptable. IRS taxes are not bankruptable. Uh, So if you file a chapter seven and you have IRS and you have student loans, you come out of the chapter seven, you still got those. Uh, If you want to keep something that has a secured loan against it, like you keep a car payment, you want to keep the car with a payment on it. You have to reaffirm that debt and just keep paying it. You bring it current if you're behind, and then you re-sign the documents, and you keep going, and you keep paying it. Or you give up the car. But you can't get rid of the car debt and keep the car. That's not an option. They have a lien on the car in a Chapter 7. So you're going to give up the car, or you're going to re-sign. So I have had people, Jade, come in and say, we're going to file bankruptcy, only we're going to reaffirm the car, and the rest of our debt, student loans, and IRS. Well, 
You didn't file bankruptcy on anything then. Yeah. <laughs> there was no no relief from the bankruptcy. You re- everything survived it. Yeah. So stupid, stupid, stupid. Don't do that. A Chapter 7 bankruptcy stays on your credit bureau report for 10 years. It's the only thing that stays on 10 years. Everything else stays on for seven years. Chapter 13 stays on seven years from the date of last activity, which is seven years from five years from now. You start oh, it, that's it takes a good five point, years to the go five through year it. Payment plan. So you yeah. end up 12 years from today if you filed 13 today before bankruptcy is off of your credit bureau report. Mm-hmm. So these are the things they don't talk about when everybody acts like bankruptcy is easy or bankruptcy is quick or whatever. Yeah. And what we were talking to her about is when you file bankruptcy, they give you a personal exemption per state, the state that you live in. Even though bankruptcy is federal court, the, the exemptions are by state, and they give you a homestead exemption. Mm-hmm. The homestead exemption is the amount of your home equity that you're allowed to keep. And so you can't have, in most states, a $400,000 paid-for house and file bankruptcy and keep it. The bankruptcy trustee will take that house oh, yeah. and sell it. They will give you the exemption amount, which in Tennessee is $7,500. Oh, Wow. And so you will lose the house, give $7,500, and they will use the rest of your equity to pay your debts. I That is painful. That's big. That's painful. That's big. Now, if you live in Florida, Texas, or Arkansas, they have a 100% homestead exemption. So they don't take your house. You can own a $2 million paid for oh, house wow. in Florida and file bankruptcy and keep the house. Question. Yep. Do you think they have a higher rate of bankruptcy filings because of that exemption? No. That's not, the, de- the data doesn't show that. It doesn't. That's no. interesting. Because bankruptcies are more ba- are based on other things. Most people don't use bankruptcy as a method to screw people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, generally, if somebody's got a $2 million house, most people will sell the house and pay their bills. Yeah. Even if they're in a state that doesn't require them to do that in bankruptcy, okay? Because most people are trying to do the right. They're trying to figure their way through this. Okay. They don't even. But and, and but there's a few people that you know yeah. do stuff like this. But you know, so that's a pretty vast difference between Texas and say Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Tennessee seven thousand five hundred dollars you get Ooh. to keep. Texas you keep all of it, no matter how big it is. If it's your personal residence, that's a big difference. So like Kentucky, $5,000. Louisiana, $35,000. I pulled up the list on, uh, oh, Google, Google here. So Maine is forty seven five, dollars Maryland, $22,975. Where'd they come up with that? Massachusetts, five hundred k. You can keep. Okay. Michigan, $30,000. Minnesota, four fifty. dollars Mississippi, $75,000. Missouri, $15,000. Nebraska, $60,000. So, yeah. so you can see it's all over the map. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, In all but those three states, if you have a super expensive home that's paid for, you don't keep the home in a Chapter 7. Wow. And you're going to be set. So the point is, if if you're not going to get rid of student loans, you're not going to get rid of the IRS, and and, and you're going to re-sign for the car, um, and... You know, you you owe eight thousand dollars on credit cards. That's the only thing that's going to go yeah. away. And you've lost your and you've lost your and, home. And then you're going to lose your home, or you're going to be handcuffed in some way or another. It's usually bankruptcy is not a big help. Yeah, that's just an atom bomb, and not really much gain from it. Yeah, it, in that in it's, that case, it's dropping an atom bomb on a tomato patch. I mean, it's just you know, there's not. It, it's a yeah. it's serious overkill. And so, um, you know that that's why. A lot of times what happens is is that people get so scared, mm-hmm. they're terrorized by the calling, the collectors calling and calling, and collectors are nasty. They sure and, are. And they're, they're giving you a hard time, and they're doing all this stuff. They get scared, and they go, well, I'm just, I'm, I give up. I surrender. I'm going to mm-hmm. file bankruptcy. But it doesn't fix it. Yeah, and especially when you times. think about the Chapter 13, you think, well, you can come up with a payment plan. You can negotiate these things exactly. down yourself. Exactly. And you, if you do it our way, you're probably going to do it in less than five years. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, our last caller and, and, you know, we got up against the commercial break and you mentioned this in the commercial break. They had a reverse mortgage. Yeah. Mom mom and dad, the lady was calling for her mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Um, They had a reverse mortgage, which is going to come back and bite her later. Yeah, because she can only pull out That's a so time. much it, equity. It when the equity 60, goes... It goes up to 65% of loan to value, and after that, they're going to stop. Mm-hmm. And then she still has to pay the taxes, the insurance, and maintain the property. And if they don't, the reverse mortgage company will foreclose on her. That's right. 
And um, she's and only going to drive Uber or Lyft for so long, right? And she's 70. Yeah. Driving Uber. So uh, what's this tell us? Well, it tells us that mom's probably selling that house in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing I didn't do in that call that I probably should have, and you brought this up, it was you, you telling me the truth was that they, they probably need to sell the house now. Yeah, before they run out. It gets rid of the reverse mortgage and take the equity that's there. It'll mm -hmm. clean up her debts as she settles mm -hmm. them. She can get a nice little apartment and live on Social Security and a little bit of Uber or Lyft money Yeah, and not have all this stuff hanging over her head. I agree. Um, but, you know, Daddy died in January, mm -hmm. and here we sit in September, and Mama's got all this stuff crashing down around her ears, and she's 70 and driving Uber. No. Oh. My heart goes so out to them. The, the thing I'm going to, you know, now we're going to sell our house. That's going to be really hard. Yeah, it is going to be hard. And but she's probably not going to want to do it I, or understand why. I, yeah, but but you've been running a business for 15 years at a loss and you got $120,000 in credit card debt. And that's where it came from. So that's, you know, this is the, the chickens coming home to roost, as, as yeah. they say. But it's very difficult. But really, what what when mom is, and when that lady is 75 years old, what is the best course of action for her to have taken? Mm -hmm. I sell the house right now. Yeah, absolutely. Clean up all the debt, settle it all. She's 100% debt free. She's in an apartment and all the pressure's off. That's right. And all the shame and the condemnation from the bills from the past and all the collectors calling in a year that she's grieving her husband's death. It's all gone. Mm -hmm. It's all cleaned up. You know, I wish I'd thought of that while I had the lady on the air. They're still listening. Uh, maybe. It's tough stuff. This is The Ramsey Show. Open phones this hour at 888-825-5225. Jade Warshaw, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Michael is with us. Hey, Michael, how are you, man? I'm doing great, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. Where do you live? Uh, Torrington, Connecticut. Connecticut. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off, sir? About $40,000 in uh, 13 months. Good All for right. you. Range of income during that time? Started at around 60 and finished just over 100K. Way Good to go. for you. Excellent. What kind of debt did you have? Uh, I had a car note, about 23000 on a car, mm -hmm. uh, 8000 in various medical debts, uh, 7.5K on credit cards, and about 1500 on miscellaneous uh, small debts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were normal. Wow. Yeah, pretty normal, I think. Normal. What happened? What, what was the deal 13 months ago? Well, uh, I just, I thought I was doing a good job keeping up with the Joneses. I had a decent condo, nice car. And, um, you know, I just found that I was stressed and anxious all the time. Mm. And, uh, I know I'm a single parent and that stuff bleeds down to our kids. And, um, I don't know. I just decided that I really wanted a better life, uh, for both of us. Mm. So that's around when I found the Ramsey show. Good for you. So good the stress you. of the debt wasn't worth it to you. Definitely not. No. Wow. And how old's your baby? Uh, she's 13. All right. Very good. Good for you. So how did you find the Ramsey Bunch? Uh, just uh, looking up on YouTube, I found you. And um, I think you were doing, um, you were on a rant, a kind of an anti-snowflakery rant. And <laughs> I was like, that is my guy. Yes. And uh, that's what, I, you know, that's when I really became interested in the show. And um, yeah, yeah, the and, and heat the heat from those rants has been known to melt entire inches of snowflakes. <laughs> yeah, so wow, it was just Snowflaker. what I needed to hear. <laughs> so great. So you were a uh, recovering snow. You, you've no. recovered. Oh, he's not a snowflake. Well, no, no, I wasn't a snowflake. You're saying you just he you just were, did, he, he agreed with me, and that meant ah, I might have something else could, to say. It got I my see, attention. It definitely got, got my attention. Got you, got you. I like it. Very good. And um, <laughs> so. 
um, I just basically I just went to work. I mean, my side jobs have side jobs. I work so many jobs. What was the most lucrative side thing you did? The thing that made the most money? Uh, well, I'm a chef by trade, and probably it's hard to say, but probably I did a lot of 1099 catering jobs that were very lucrative. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, like some private chefing. That's some good money, huh? Yeah, very good money in that. And um, I do a lot of deliveries, food and grocery deliveries. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why those have been so great is because my daughter likes to come with me. Um, so it's kind of a way to work extra hours um, and, and spend and time with her at the yeah. same time. Cool. Yeah, she's yeah. she's been my navigator, my DJ, my traveling comedian for <laughs> thousands <laughs> of deliveries. Well, and you know, if she's doing the DJing, the music's much better <laughs> than if you did. She would definitely agree with you on yeah. that day for yeah. sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. One hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, very good, man. Very cool. So what kind of money can you make doing the side chefing idea? Um, that it, it's it's all it's over fifty dollars an hour, I yeah. can tell you oh, that. That's great. Yeah, I um, so. And that's yeah. a lot more than I make in any of my other jobs. Um yeah. but you know good for it's you. It's nice to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, that's but so I mean cool. well, that's again the usually we find the best side gigs are an extension of your professional. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. like teachers that do tutoring can make forty or fifty an hour. Absolutely. You know, side gig, that yeah. kind of stuff. We see that all the time. But just taking what you're doing in your professional world and, and moving it around that mm -hmm. way. Good stuff, man. So uh, who was your biggest cheerleader other than your 13-year-old? <laughs> um, I had a lot of I have a lot of coworkers that cheered me on. I think most people, uh, most friends and family probably think I'm a little crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you are. Just, yeah, I am. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah, yeah and I'm crazy. proud to say. Um, you know, disregarding the credit score and all that is, it's a tough sell to a lot of people, Absolutely. you know, a lot of my family, but they, but they've always supported me and encouraged me. They may not agree with it, but now that you've paid off 40 grand in 13 months, do they believe it all? <laughs> I don't know. I hope so. That's pretty good. I hope they yeah, do. That's, yeah. That speaks volumes right there that you actually did it. It's not, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I would say definitely, uh, budgeting was the number mm -hmm. one thing for me. It was something I had never done before. I couldn't have even told you how much I made a year, how much, how much much debt I had honestly I had no idea because um, I had never laid it out like that and so uh, using every dollar was uh, a big big help for me I still use it now that's cool very good very good good for you man I'm that's proud exciting. of you way to go hero how's it feel to be free I can't tell you how great it feels I I've never fallen asleep so fast at night before my head even hits the pillow because wow. I just don't you know I used to stress out about you know the next paycheck and the next bill that's due and and yeah you know, um, I just don't worry about that anymore I just don't have to and it's just a great feeling and um, I just encourage people that um, it, even if you're a single parent you can definitely do it um, yeah. you know just that's start really budgeting and, and get to work yeah, let them be your DJ. Yeah, let's go. There we go. Oh, man. Very That's good exciting. stuff. Good stuff. Really, really cool. All right, we've got a copy of uh, the Baby Steps Millionaire's book for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. You're on your way, hero. And uh, Total Money Makeover book. And you can give that to somebody if they actually inquire about how you pulled this off. And the same thing for Financial Peace University. So that's the live and give box, and it'll get you uh, get you something you can live and something you can give. So good stuff. I know your Appreciate daughter's it. not going to join you on stage, but let's honor her anyway What as the DJ. What's her name? That's Clara, my daughter. Clara. Mm -hmm. Way to go, Clara. Appreciate you supporting your dad, and uh, your dad's a hero. You ought, to let, you ought to tell him he's awesome because he is. <laughs> Very cool stuff. Good job. All right. Michael from Connecticut, 40000 paid off. Side hustles had side hustles. He did it. <laughs> in 13 months making 60 to 100 count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three two one i'm debt-free yeah Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! i love it way to go kiddo so, Jade, uh, in the program today we've had two debt-free screams both of them said that every dollar the every dollar budgeting app was key. It is key. Because, like, I mean, he did a great job explaining it. Most people, I think I read a stat that said 70% or 77% of Americans, if you say, hey, what did you spend last month? They, they couldn't tell you. I have any idea. Because they don't have any, I mean, they, they really do not track it at all. You don't track it. And when you start tracking it, there's a rule in business that says what gets measured gets done. Mm, that's so good. And, yes. And, and same thing's true with money. If you don't measure it, if you don't tell your money what to do, you'll always wonder where it went. The Every Dollar Budgeting app is the world's best budgeting app. We brag about it, but, but it really is. It's yeah. legitimately amazing. 
Uh, you can try it completely for free. And this coming Tuesday, George Campbell is going to be doing one of our budgeting webinars. Jade's already done a few. Rachel's mm -hmm. done a few. Y'all are going to be doing some more later. That's right. This coming Tuesday, George Campbell is back after he's his wife just had a brand new baby, mm -hmm. and uh, they've been at home for a while, but he's back. He's going to be with us in Chicago this weekend. But then this coming Tuesday, he'll be doing the, uh, the Every Dollar webinar. He'll be online. Uh, we limit that because you get to interact with him with questions during the process. People jump in. That's right. And so if you want to be part of the webinar there on this coming Tuesday, George Camel's going to be doing it on putting together every dollar. It's completely free. It's completely free. So you just go to everydollar.com slash budgeting, and you can learn how to do some of the stuff that Michael did, and he paid off $40,000 yeah. in 13 months. Yeah, it's so necessary. And so many people think, oh, I have a budget. I do it on paper every month. But it's not the same because when you go on the every dollar one, you track, you're tracking each day what you're spending to make sure you're actually hitting your numbers. It's not just you setting it and forgetting it, right? Right. And that, to me, is the key. Well, I mean, you, you can set a budget and forget it, and it's not really a budget. It's no. Just, it was a It, it was, was just a list. list. Yeah. Exactly. It was exactly <laughs> what it was. And so, you know, in business, we have, you know, you have your budget for the month, and then you have your actual for the month. Mm -hmm. And you say, okay, we brought in more revenue or less revenue than we thought mm -hmm. over or under budget. Mm -hmm. We spent more or less than we thought over, and our profits were over or under. Mm -hmm. And you compare what you plan to do with what you actually did. Yes. And every dollar does that minute by minute. Yeah, when you're doing it in real time, you can adjust as opposed to waiting till the end of the month and going, oh crap. Because you can't keep spending more than you make. You're not in Congress. That's right. Everydollar.com slash budgeting. George Camel going to be this coming Tuesday, the 19th of September. Free webinar. Sign up for it. This is The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, Hebrews 12, 11, no discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Abraham Lincoln said, discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. Ooh, that's good. Catherine is in Minneapolis. Hi, Catherine. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, Dave. I am super excited to talk to you. You too. What's up? I have, um, I've been listening to you since I was 25 years old. I lived right there in Franklin, Tennessee. Now I'm 54 and I live in Wisconsin, right outside of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And I have a question. My husband and I, well, I followed you, like I said, for years. Um, we have two. We're both optometrists. Mm -hmm. um, he's also a farmer and I'm also a yoga instructor. We have been practicing optometry for about 29 years. We are completely out of debt. That happened about four years ago. We feel very blessed. We worked really hard. Way to go. We're, thank you. Um, we're wondering if you might have some advice of where to go now. We were all with drive and bigger when we were trying to get out of debt, you know, checking off of our boxes and all of that. And now that We've done that. We've got about four and a half years left that we want to do optometry before we retire, but we're we're feeling burned out. We're not feeling that drive and that vigor and that sense of accomplishment of checking things off. And we're just wondering if you have any advice of, I don't know, where to go from here. And like I said, I feel very blessed even mm -hmm. speaking this question. Um, so you've paid off the debt. Is, House and everything. House and everything. Oh, yeah. Way to go. Yeah, That's amazing. Right before COVID. Right before Congratulations, COVID, the yeah. house got paid off. Thank well, you. And we feel very proud. Good, um, but good. now we're just trying to figure out how to keep that 
drive right. going and, and to be able to work for the next four and a half years. <laughs> well, in some ways, you don't need the same drive as far as that intensity because it's like, oh, I'm paying off debt. I'm doing this. You've earned the right to take your foot off the gas. Obviously, you you have all of this margin now, right? So you're doing those three things that we always do with money. We're giving some of it. We're saving more of it and we're spending it. And I think that that's yeah. kind of what you guys need to, this is the good part, right? This is a fun part where you sit down I know. and you look at that margin and you're like, okay, because here's the thing, you've got to, you've got to give something because then you realize this is what this was all for, right? You've got to keep that right. perspective. And the more you give, you realize that you've got to spend some of it because if you don't, it's like, all we do is work, 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 right? And you're right. not enjoying right. it. So you've got to spend some of it. And then of course, you've got to continue to save because you are thinking about the future. You are thinking about this life that you want to have. So Right. That's really that's really all there is to it. And now I get what you're saying because you are in this mindset for however many years of I'm just stacking away. I'm going, going, going. And it's kind of too hard to yeah. turn that off. What I have what yeah. I what I did was um, I found that in not only in business, but from a ministry perspective and uh, mm -hmm. from a financial perspective, I get a lot of energy from a detailed goal. Mm hmm. That's my husband. Yeah, and I, it uh, it doesn't even matter what it is as long as it's detailed and it and I can measure progress towards that goal. Okay, it could be a generosity goal. It could be uh, we want to go on this trip, and we want to save towards that. It could be uh, uh, you know a, a, a friend of mine just bought a big classic car that he's thought of for the last twenty years he wanted to buy, and that was a big goal. Mm -hmm. He worked towards it. He said, "Now what do I do?" I said, mm -hmm. "You need another goal." Mm -hmm. I don't care what it okay. is, get you a goal, you know, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, one of the most fun ones we've had, Sharon and I've had, and we're in the same place. I mean, baby step seven and at the ends of our careers, right. And so forth mm -hmm. was, I ran into this guy who, uh, not counting his tithe and his normal rhythm of giving. In addition to that, he had a goal. He wanted to give away a million dollars in a year. To ministries, mm -hmm. just to give to other help other people, right? And mm -hmm. uh, so we set that as a goal. We were able to do it one year, and that was so much yeah. fun. And then we decided. Yeah. I want. Then I decided a few years ago, and it, we did this about three years ago, I think, or four. Uh, I guess it was a year before COVID. Maybe we said, uh, "I want to give away a million dollars in in one day." <laughs> that was fun. That's crazy. That was crazy, you know. And, yeah, and I, I'm a kid yeah. from Antioch, Tennessee, man. I, I can't even. I couldn't even wrap my head around having a million dollars, much less giving away a million, much less giving away a million in one day. Let me know the next time you're planning on doing that, and, and let me put my <laughs> let me put my <laughs> name in the hat. <laughs> Right. But I mean, so I'm not bragging. I'm just saying the point. The point is that the stuff we teach works, and it puts you in a position. If you live like no one else, later you can live mm -hmm. and give like no one else. Yeah. And so, sure. what you yeah. need then is something that matters to you, that is a very clearly defined, high definition goal, to where you will know exactly how close you are to it, and when you hit it. It's not vague. It's not some sin, It's not some mm -hmm. feeling. It's very objective, very measurable. And you say, okay, okay. by this date, we want to do this. And then your mind automatically starts unpacking uh, what my friend Henry Cloud says. He says, what must be true. Yeah. It's not true today in order to be there at that date. Yeah, that's right. What is it that to be, in order to give that, save that, uh, you know, I, I want this. I, I want to be in a position. I mean, I, you know, I don't mind the vague ones that are kind of funny. I, I used to work for a guy that was real motivational. He was a great guy. He said, I want to make enough money I can read the menu left to right. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at the price first on what I'm going to order, I'm going to look at the stuff, decide what I want to order, and then I'll notice the price. That's right. He said, that's a that's a state of mind. Now, that's a little bit weird, a little bit funny, but but it is I a mindset. It, mm -hmm. is a, it is a, I've gotten comfortable. I've gotten content. Mm -hmm. uh, this meal is not going to oh, yeah. define me. I can do whatever I want to do with this meal. It's like what you said about Sharon, wanting to be able to just go to the store, and you know you can put what you want in the basket, and it's not a, it's not a thing. It's a buggy. 
I can't say it. I can't. I can't go there. <laughs> she wanted to go to the grocery store and fill up her buggy. Book. I said that on the live stream the other night. Book and basket. Rachel and Jade made so much fun of me when I got off the air. They're like, a buggy? No, you did it on the air. <laughs> we you made did. fun of me on right the live stream. in front stream. of your face. <laughs> it's not a buggy. It's a cart. It's not a cart. It's a buggy. A basket. A cart. A shopping cart, it's if not, you will. It's, like a, it's not a baby buggy. It is a, I don't know, that's what we call it. So anyway, she wanted to be able to go to the grocery store and buy groceries without thinking about it. Yeah. Because we were so broke that we had to squeeze every Look. dime on every paycheck on everything. We couldn't breathe. That's how I feel. I, I relate to Sharon in that way so much. That was my thing. Is I, I want to know that we ha- can, but now we can budget enough to where I don't have to be think. I don't. I'm not calculating it as I go. Right. Yeah. I guess if you've ever been where you didn't know if you could feed your kids, you weren't a hundred percent sure you could Ooh. feed your kids. We all. They always got fed. We mm-hmm. weren't. But it was. It was touch and go. Yeah. You know. If you've ever been there, where that's a different kind of terror. Yeah. And if you've ever been there, then you know, going to the grocery store and filling up your buggy. Filling up your cart with anything you want to put in it, mm-hmm. that becomes a really solid goal. That's funny. And the funny thing is, like I said the other night, she's such a tightwad, she still doesn't do it. But <laughs> And now she could buy the grocery store, but, you know, but that doesn't matter. She just goes in there and gets whatever. Fill up your but, buggy, open up your pocketbook and pay for it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you didn't get it. If you say buggy, you also say pocketbook. What's wrong with pocketbook? It's a wallet. It's not a wallet. It's a purse. A pocketbook <laughs> and a purse are the same thing. No, your pocketbook is your wallet, right? No. Booth guys? No. Wait a second. I've only ever heard pocketbook in like a woman's purse context. Purse. It's a purse. <sighs> you open it? Okay. My mama carried her pocketbook. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, I remember that my whole life. I don't, well, where still, did you grow up purse? anyway? wallet you know i only know these phrases because i have family in virginia so I, that's, that's how i know about it well, we can't keep you on here long enough we're going to teach you to speak hillbilly i'm that's, just saying i'm getting close <laughs> you keep your pocketbook in your buggy that's right that's what you do when you're shopping oh my I'm just goodness saying. bobby robertson's from alabama is that true bobby you keep your pocketbook in your buggy. Keep your, okay, that's, how that's you do what it, right it is. There, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Guys in the booth, great job today. As always, we appreciate you. The booth dudes, as always, doing a great job. Jade Washaw, good job as well. I am Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. What's up, guys? It's Jade. Look, if you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey Baby Steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. That's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.